everyone, it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making this little pot of forget-me-nots. Now I do believe these were my grandma's favourite flower and I remember walking past a little a bunch of them in the garden uh, whenever I went to her when they were in bloom of course and it's always so nice to see them so they always remind me of my grandma. So I hope you will enjoy this tutorial and I hope you will make them. Let's get started. So what do you need for this project? Well, first of all, the colours. I am using Meadow for the green, Aster for the flowers, Citron for the middle of the flowers, and Parchment for the pot. Then I am using a three hook because I want it to be really, really sort of as small as possible and nice and tight. I've got some snips here. I have a jar. Now this is quite a small jar, but um, you know whatever you've got is fine because the way I'm going to explain how to make the pot will allow you to make any size jar. Then of course I've got my hot glue gun with some glue sticks as well and I have some stuffing to fill the jar with. Now you can use um, yarn leftovers, you know some people keep them, you know you can put them in there anything really you can put in there an old sock a bit of t-shirt um you know whatever you need to get rid of basically uh you can put in there it's just so that you can form the top uh, the base where you're then going to attach the flowers to so let's get started Starting with your yarn in your hands like this, we are going to make a magic circle. So wrap the yarn around your fingers in a crosswise motion. Pick up your hook and put your hook underneath this strand here. Pick up the back strand and bring it through, twisting your hand like this and twisting your hook. Going back to that back strand, picking up the yarn and doing a chain like so. Now we are going to take your fingers out, hold your yarn the way you usually do, hold your hook, and we are going to start doing single crochets in the magic circle over the two strands of yarn. Single crochets into the magic circle and we are going to do 10 of them. Now that actually means we are doing nine and the tenth one will be a slip stitch over that initial chain that we did. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that's nine of them. Now making sure, you, because it's easy for it to start twisting, you hold it flat between your fingers like so. Start pulling the end and can you see it's getting smaller? Look, but you must keep your fingers on it so it doesn't start twirling round. And so yeah, so this has made a little lovely little circle. So once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, into the ninth V. Pull this one so it gets a little bit smaller, the one on your hook, just so that we work neatly. Bring through the yarn and you are going to do a slip stitch. So we now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten V's going around the outside of your work. And this is the end of our citron. And what I tend to do now is I am going to, this is coming out of here, I'm going to mimic this stitch using this end here. So I'm going to go under this V, lay this over the hook, 
if I can show you because it's yeah and bring it to the back okay now you could bring it through here as well see there so we mimic that stitch and it looks as if there we go see but also remember if you do this you have to pick up four strands here because of course this is a double one um, and we've just sort of used that so we have this end at the back now and it's sort of sewn in a little bit now I keep pulling the middle one to make my little circle smaller as you can see it will give away a bit more and making it really really small look at that so we have a nice neat middle of our uh, forget me not let's get on with the next color so in aster I am going to go under any V so I'm going to go just into there then I'm holding my yarn lay it over your hook and pull it through so all you have is a loop really so don't pull this one too hard because obviously things will move now I'm going to chain one two and three then I'm going to yarn over twice into the same V I am going to do one treble one two and three chain one again a treble so you yarn over twice this time you're going to go into the next V you pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two now to finish off our petal we're going to do one two three chains and then we are going to go into that same stitch and do a slip stitch so your repeat is the following into the next stitch slip stitch chain three one two three treble into the same stitch and bring it through yeah one two and three there we go chain one treble into the next stitch there we go and one two three chains and then back into that same stitch where we are going to do a slip stitch so even though we have 10 V's on the outside of our work we only need five petals so we are using per petal we are using two V's two stitches so this is how you are going to continue into the next stitch with a slip stitch there we go chain three one two three treble into that same location one two and three chain treble into the next stitch i think this was the one where i had to pick up the four loops because it was the one where i finished so that's going well three chains and into that same stitch for a slip stitch there we go and on to the next one and you can see here one two one two yeah i'm doing well it's working out so three chains treble i mean these are really lovely to make um use so little yarn um, and to be honest um, yes I am using acrylic these would be much nicer on oh, the next stitch in a lovely cotton thin cotton um, in this colors but of course yeah I'm using what I have got at the moment so there we go <laughs> okay so there we are and into the next stitch slip stitch three chains treble into that same stitch oh no that's a yep yeah. chain one treble into that 
treble into the next stitch. One, two, three. And then of course into that last stitch we do a slip stitch. There we go. And that is the end. Cut it off, pull it through and that's the end of our flower. So we are going to go into that next stitch here. Put this around your hook and just pull it through. Just so it makes um, sort of a nice end to the actual flower, so all the blue is connected. So for the leaves, we are going to start with a slip knot, so holding your yarn in your hands like this, wrapping it round twice like this, bring the back one over the front, the one that's at the back then comes over the one that's at the front, and then pull up the one that's at the back then, let go and just tighten the loop. Pull and close the loop around your hook. Chain 25. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And then the first one we are just going to skip, we are going to do a slip stitch in the next one because we need to sort of create a point. Then we are going to do a single crochet in the next five because the, the leaves are not very wide so we don't want to sort of make it too wide. I am picking up two of the loops as you can see. There we go. I'm just trying to hold on to everything here as best I can. How many have I done? Four. I mean, to be honest, it doesn't really matter. You can just, you know, do what you feel or do less or do more. I think I did less in some of them, more in others. So all I want to do really is make a narrow leaf. So I'm now doing half double crochets and I'm doing those almost to the end. Um, that way I will have, when I come back in a moment, I won't have a leaf that's too wide. So I'm not doing, oh, this yarn split a bit, I'm not doing um, double crochets because that will make the leaf just too wide. Now the thing is, if you think you're not going to use all of this, don't bother making it, okay? Uh, if it's going to be hidden under a flower, then don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stop here because I know this is long enough. So I'm going to do a chain and another chain that will bring me sort of to there. I'm going to do a slip stitch here. So I get to the center of my leaf. So now I'm basically turning round and I'm going to do another chain to give me the height. And I've turned my work so that my chain is on the top here. And now I am going to do a half double crochet into that third little strand from the chain that I used earlier. And I'm just going to do as many half double crochets as I did just now, so that obviously the leaf is identical on both sides. Let me have a look. Yeah, that's looking good. See, this nobody's going to see this. I mean, you could have chained less, basically. Um, you know, what will happen is it's going to look something like this, so nobody's going to see the end anyway. But I always like to add some greenery if. I make a flower display like this because it just makes it look a little bit more realistic. And here we are. I am now where I did the single crochets. Oh, I split something there. So I am now also doing single crochets here. See? And here is where I did that first 
single crochet but I am going to do a slip stitch because obviously we're needing to make a point and I want to have a point then I do a slip stitch in the middle of the leaf there and then I start coming back over the middle of the leaf where I'm going to do the middle vein slip stitching coming back along the leaf see this is my pointy end now see so trying to <laughs> manipulate everything uh, holding on to everything in my hand I'm trying to um, you know not make my slip stitches too big or too small just about the width of a yeah look the width of a stitch and again you know just do the amount you think you will need I'm just going to go down to the end of the leaf here uh, where should I put it here in there yeah in the V yeah put it in the V and then what I tend to do is just put one around the outside there we go see there we are so we've got our leaf ready so all of this really, you know, don't worry about it. It will disappear once we have our display ready. So now I am thinking of sort of sewing them together like this. See, that's what I've done with these. See, this is one I made where I've had a long bit as well. I've sort of put one uh, flower at the end, one at the side, because I'm thinking, yeah, that would be nice um, if, it, if I have it displayed like this. So I've made in total... I've made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flowers. One, two, three, four, five leaves. Because I think, yeah, that's enough greenery. Okay. So as you can see, I have attached, I have sewn some together, which was quite nice to do, sort of trying to make a little sort of display. And I think, um, you know, that will help me later on when I am trying to put them together onto my pot so this is all ready for me now to make um, you know sort of do the display later on with my hot glue gun so let's get started on the cover for our flower pot so I am going to get started with doing a slip knot insert your hook and close it up and now we are going to do four chains one two three and four then we are going to go back to the first chain and go into that yep and bring through your yarn bringing it through the loop on your hook as well chain two one two now we've made a little hole here as you can see and that's in which we are going to start working so yarn over we are going to do half double crochets into the circle into the hole there we go and we are going to do 12 of them well that means we need 12 v's on the outside of our work so again we are doing 11 and then the 12th one will be the closing slip stitch and of course, in the beginning, this, as you've got nothing to hold on to, is always a little bit more awkward. But it seems to be working all right. There we go. <clears throat> and of course, I haven't counted. <laughs> as usual. Right, let me just do this one and then let's count. Two, four, six, eight nine these are the two chains that we did to start with so we need to do 10 of course it all turns around 11 okay so now we have 11 v's now we're going to go under that v there which is our 11th one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and then we do a slip stitch and that makes it the 12th V. Okay. And of course you can 
sort of pull this one to make it a little bit tighter but also what you can do is use this one to sew it in and then really pull that little sort of middle circle closed so there's no opening anymore. Now we are going to chain two and we are going to do two half double crochets in each V around. So yarn over into the first V you do a half double crochet and you do another one. Next stitch, two half double crochets. So from our 12 V's or 12 half double crochets, we are now going to go to 24. And of course we are doing the increase ratios as what we need for a flat circle. So if you want to find out the exact ratios, then there's going to be a video displayed here which you can click to make sure that you are informed about how to do a flat circle. Because of course, you might have a jar that has a slightly different dimension than mine. And you might have to do more circles, more rounds to cover your jar. So, um, you know, that will tell you what to do. But of course, I am going to tell you as well what to do for as many rounds as I am going to need to do <laughs> if you get what I'm trying to say <laughs> and this of course has brought me to the end of my round I now have that last V so I'm going to go into there do a half double crochet and of course this chain is going to count as my second half double crochet so that is going to be skipped we're going to go under the V here to do our slip stitch there we go and that now gives me 24 stitches all around the edge of my work same thing again chain two into the first one we are going to go and do one half double crochet the next one we are going to do two half double crochets so this time our increase ratio is the following. We are going to do one half double crochet in the first stitch, two half double crochets in the next stitch. So one, and then two. And that's how you will continue. I will meet you here. I've made it to the end of the row. So one more in that last stitch where there should be two this is my second one skipping those two chains going under the next one here to do my slip stitch now of course if your jar is not all that big do try and you know try it out at regular intervals so i think that i need just another row here so also remember you can do if you don't need the height of a row of half double crochets remember you can do single crochets as well so chain two and off we go again so one half double crochet in the first stitch one half double crochet in the next stitch and then two half double crochets so there is a trick of remembering what to do and of course that's all in that video that I linked earlier. So there we go, so two now, so one, one and two. I will see you at the end of the row. Made it to the end of the row, last one here, skipping the chains, going into the next V, doing my slip stitch. There we go. Okay, so holding it onto my jar, I can see that it is just about the width of the jar. Yeah, because of course it's going in a little bit here, so that's fine. Um, so make sure you've got sort of, yeah, 
about the same diameter as your charm. Now we are going to start working on the sides. So we no longer have to do any increases. So you're going to chain two and you are going to sort of tip the work towards you. This is going to be the outside because that's the pretty side. This is the inside. And you are going to pick up the back loop only of every stitch around. So still doing half double crochets, just pick up the back loop only. So you can see your V here. This is the front loop, this is the back loop. That's the one that we are going to be picking up. And there's no increases to be done, so just one stitch in each back loop around. I will see you at the end of the round. Made it to the end of the round, skipping these two here, under the next V and a slip stitch. And this is how we are going to continue, except of course now we are not picking up the back loop, we're just picking up the two Vs as usual. So the picking up the back loop was only just so that we would have a nice little edge on our pot. Look there, see, you sort of have a little edge sticking out. Uh, which is a nice detail and if you maybe not just yet but you will have your side standing up really soon because of course um, you're not doing any more increases so it should go up the side basically so I am now going to continue doing these rounds until it is the height of my pot but I am planning on doing a little sort of fold over so that uh, it looks like, you know, sort of the terracotta pots where you have that rim around the top edge. So that's what I want to do. So I will show you in a moment, of course, <laughs> technology, hey, um, how uh, tall I have made mine and what I am planning on doing sort of with the folding over. And then we will do the assembly as well. So I am going to fire up the hot glue gun. <laughs> And off and away we will go. I will see you in a moment. Okay, so for us to have a base on top of the pot to assemble our flowers on, I am going to make exactly the same thing as the base of the pot that we just made. So I am going to do a slip knot, chain four, make a circle and then with half double crochets I am going to make a flat circle. So in a way you're just repeating what you have done earlier and this is just so that you have something to keep your filling in basically and to put your flowers on. So just making sure you have 11 V's, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, just one more, you then go under that uh, chain here, skipping those two, I mean you know what you're doing because you've done it before. <laughs> okay, so now we keep going, same thing, two half double crochets then the next row we do one half double crochet in the first stitch and then two half double crochets in the next stitch and you make it as big as you need for your opening of your jar so i will see you in a moment with all your parts of your flower pot ready for assembly And the last half double crochet slip stitch and that's it. So I have made this pot far too tall. Okay, so have a look. This is the height of my pot. This is how tall I have made it. About even, you know, two inches too tall. Now the whole setup of this is that I want to fold this over and create that kind of 
you know, sort of rim that a uh, terracotta pot has. So let's put my glass jar in. There we go. Look at that. And sort of just sort of at the level of the edge of the jar. There we go. OK, so I really like this look. So let's cut off the yarn here. There we go. So we pull that through and I'll have to sew that in in a moment. Now, I have also made a disc, same design as the base. So if you have to go back and look at that part of the video for making the base here. Now, I have done this in green because obviously I am going to be putting this on top of there to just cover up the top of the pot. Um, and then I'll be putting my flowers on there. Now, I haven't cut the green off here because I have got my hot glue gun heating up. But after you have actually <laughs> put your stuffing in, I mean, I'm just putting it in so it just fills up the middle of the pot. Um, you could possibly sew this together. Uh, but yeah, you know I like using my hot glue gun, so that's what we are going to use today. So what I would suggest you do here is, yeah, I am going to cut off my yarn. Uh, you could use it with, you know, cut it off with a long length and then use it to sew on if you want to. But I'm just going to leave it like that. It's going to be, you know, sort of hot glued to the base like that. So nobody will see it. Anyway, nobody will see this base because, to be honest, I am only doing this to actually put my flowers on in a pleasing way. So I got my pins out as well. And I'm just going to, you know, I've, um, you know, already sewn some together. So I'm just going to sort of pin them to the base in a pleasing manner and I'm just going to check to see if that's the way I like it and then I will glue them in place and then I will glue it on top of the pot in place so you know just sort of doing a little bit of flower arranging at the moment that's the end of one of those ah oh, that's better yeah there we go so and I mean, you can come over the pot, obviously, you know, so come out of your disc. That's fine. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these bits yet. They were a little bit too big, but I'll just put them in like that. And let's just put a pin out. <laughs> so it stays. So everything sort of stays into place a little bit, just so you can see. I think I've got too many flowers there. Just so you can see, you know, what it looks like um, with it finished, you know, what it would look like when it's all done. So let me just push this one here in there. And yeah, I like it when you know, there's sort of a little bit. I'm just going to cut this off because that's not going to be visible. And this one as well. It's a little bit shorter for me to deal with. There we go. So let's put that in there. And then the flower on top of that. Yeah, see, that's another bit of greenery that's going to be sticking out. Just so, you know, see what it looks like. And then when you're happy with that, it's hot glue time. <laughs> Yay. Okay, let's decorate stick the greenery up a bit yeah I think maybe here for that last flower I don't know or here in the middle right in the middle there we go look at that yeah that's good okay so I will just have to um, I'm just gonna cut these off to make them shorter and I shall put these in the middle there. Make sure nobody sees the end. Or, I mean, obviously, you know, <laughs> you can sew them in. <laughs> and there, look at that. So one of the leaves will be hanging down like that. Yeah, I think that looks nice. And sort of push this one in. Or have it higher up so you've got sort of like a 3D effect, of course. There we go. So now, okay, before we put anything there, I am going to put this 
I am going to glue this on. So undo your pin, get ready to do the gluing here. Put some glue on there and press it in. Now do be careful, it is hot glue. I have, I haven't burnt my fingers before, but I have, you know. <laughs> okay, so that's the first one that's on there. Then we have here another pin. So let's take that one out and redo that one. Okay, so put that on there. Oh, I forgot how it went. Yes, make sure you do. <laughs> make sure you don't. <laughs> Make sure you remember how it goes. Uh, it's always handy, you know, take a picture of it. That helps as well. Okay, so then I've got one here. I think I've went, gone a little bit more to the side here. So let's put this one there. Okay, so this one goes in because, of course, yeah, that will get stuck there. Then for the leaf, let's put the leaf on like so little bit to this side because we've got one there so yeah it's just arranging it really in a pleasing manner and yeah I'm being lazy and not um, you know sewing in any of these ends but you know you could do make it all nice and tidy there we go a little bit of hot glue on there and pop the flower on and of course hot glue yeah it sort of is instant you know instant drying isn't it so there we go so take this one off and yep so we're going to put that one here put this one on there there we go okay and then of course we had that one flower left over which we're going to put in the middle here a little bit higher up so we've got that 3D effect. Yep, get rid of the end so you don't see them. <laughs> oh, cutting corners all the time. <laughs> if we can get away with it, why not, eh? There we go, see? Right, okay, I think that looks nice. So now I've got my base here with all the flowers on it. I'm just going to sew in the ends. <laughs> I'm going to sew in the ends using hot glue. <laughs> there we go. Just sticking it down. Don't try not to touch it because of course now it's hot. There we go. That's going to stay in. Now I am going to have to do something to this, I'm sure. <laughs> She's finding a solution. <laughs> I'll do that. There we go. Look, nobody's going to notice. Honestly. Right, okay. So I am going to put a little bit of hot glue on the base of my... Not too much because, of course, you still want it to sort of, you know, stand flat. So just pressing it down. Yeah, that's still fine. Okay, so that is going to be attached now. Yeah, look, I can't get it out. That's good. Okay. And now we are going to put hot glue um, all around the edge of the glass here. As well as you can. And we are going to press this on top. There we go. And what I want to do now is just pull up the edge from my pot, you know, the bit that's folded over a tiny bit. So it covers, sort of, it comes just past that edge of my green bit. There you go. Look. See, so it's nice and flush together. And here we have it. Our little pot of forget-me-nots. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.
Don't forget to like and share this video, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any of my uploads. Also make sure you're a member of our Facebook group. Here are some suggested videos for you, I hope you enjoy watching them. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!